How's it going everybody? We're back again with another video and today we're going to be showing you how to create alarms inside of an HMI. Now it's another hot one today in the UK so I've got the windows open so if you can hear traffic in the background I do apologise but I don't want to pass out whilst recording. Before we get started what I'd like you to do, like the video, leave a comment below and then hit the subscribe button if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're following us on Facebook give us a like over there, head over to YouTube and hit the subscribe button over there as well. Let's get into today's video. So, so far on our project, what we have is we have our screens, we have a template inside of our screen management. There's the template that we created in the previous video. And this template is the same template throughout all three screens. So if we go to any screen in this project, we should see the same template, the same style throughout those screens there. Now we also created navigation in last week's video as well, so that allows us to bounce from the home screen to go to our control screen which had our push buttons to our lamps from our very first video and it also allows us to go to our alarm screen. The alarm screen is going to be what we are going to be creating today. So what I want us to do first of all is let's open up the alarm screen and then let's add in an alarms view. So to open up the alarms view or to add this in, just go to your toolbox and inside your controls menu, you should see the number one thing there and that there is your alarms view. If you click that, it'll then ask you to then drag and drop it onto the screen and this is just dragging and dropping the actual size of the alarms view. Now in this project, again, we're not connected to the PLC just yet. So what I want to do is I'm going to have internal tags creating these alarms. Usually these would come from the PLC. These would be monitoring the external devices in the real world. They would come into the PLC. The PLC would then see those alarms and latch these alarms on. And then we would pick those tags up from the actual HMI. However, as we don't have a PLC connected, all I'm going to do here is I'm simply just going to create that internally in the HMI itself and then just trigger the alarms from the HMI screen. So at the moment, what I've done there is I've created my alarms view. And if I just select the alarms view and go to its properties, so inside of the properties, this is where we can set up the appearance, the layout, etc. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to go to general and inside of there, it's asking you, what do you want to display? Do we want to display the current alarm states or do you want to display the alarm buffer? The alarm buffer is going to show you every alarm that has happened in this system. So it gives you a previous track record. But what I want to do is I want to show it current alarm states, including pending alarms and unacknowledged alarms. And then you can see here, it's asking you what alarm classes do you want to include in this alarm view? Do you want to include the errors, the warnings and the systems? And this is all inside of these HMI alarms folder over here here we can actually create classes and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it as default I'm going to leave it as errors warnings and system and I'm going to come onto these shortly when we, when we actually get into the HMI alarms next I want to go to appearance and I'm going to change the background color so it matches the background of my HMI so I believe that was the third gray and there it is there and I'm going to change the foreground color to a darker gray just so it stands out a little bit better on the actual screen and there we go. Next, if I go down to display, you can then see it's asking you, do you want to give it the option for vertical scrolling and do you want a vertical scroll bar? I'm not going to have the option for vertical scrolling. All I've got on this HMI is going to be two alarms. These two alarms won't fill up the alarms view, so I don't need to worry about vertical scrolling. So I'm just going to uncheck that. Now, in a real system, if you've got many alarms inside of that system, you might want to have the ability to scroll vertically inside of the actual alarms view, but we're just leaving it as it is. Next, go to the toolbar, and then inside of the toolbar, it's asking you what buttons do you want to have on the alarm. And you'll see here, we've got tool tip, and if I just unselect that, the question mark button disappears. If I select it again, that's where the question mark appears. And what this allows the operator to do is it allows the operator to select the actual alarm, click on the tool tip, and it might give the operator a little bit more informational use about that actual alarm. We're not using this in this one, so I'm just going to uncheck that. The next one is the acknowledge and what the acknowledge does, it allows the operator to say, yep, I noticed that there's an alarm there, I've acknowledged the alarm and then if the alarm has been cleared inside of the program, then it will disappear from the alarms view. 
that there is important so we're going to leave the acknowledge there and then loop in alarm i'm going to uncheck as well but loop in alarm is this enter key and if i uncheck that it'll disappear what this does it allows the operator then click on the alarm click loop in alarm and then what that does it takes them to another screen detailing information on that specific alarm i'm not going to get that advanced just yet with these alarms here all i want to have on there is the acknowledge key that's it and that there is effectively our alarm view set up so far now you'll notice i haven't covered the majority of this screen i've sort of positioned it halfway on the actual hmi itself and the reason for this is because i'm actually going to set up two buttons or well four buttons to actually control the states of these two alarms one to set the alarm one one to set alarm two the other to reset alarm one the other to reset alarm two so i'm just going to go to elements here and i'm just going to select button and I'm just going to add one to the screen there. And I'm going to call this set a one for set alarm one. I'm then going to add another button on this screen. And that there is going to be set a two for set alarm two. And then just going to move these buttons up a little bit. Like so. And then I'm going to add in another two buttons. Reset a one. And another button here to reset a two alarm one and alarm two and then i'm just going to position these again there we go there we go that'll do for now and then what we'll do is we'll assign these buttons to actually trigger those alarms in a second now to actually trigger these alarms what we need to do is we need to go to our hmi alarms view over here if I just double click HMI alarms, here is where we can actually enter in all of the different types of alarms inside of this HMI or inside of this PLC program. Now you'll notice at the top you've got four tabs, one that says discrete alarms, another one that says analog alarms. Discrete alarms works on a bit, so it's a logic zero to a logic one and analog alarms are working on values so you might have a 0 to 100 range and you might want to trigger the alarm when it gets to 90 and above you've then got alarm classes and then inside of your alarm classes is where you see your errors your systems and your warning alarms now error alarms are critical alarms they are alarms that are critical to your system System alarms refer to the PLC, refer to the HMI, and warning alarms are non-critical alarms that just need to alert the operator that they've turned on. So what we're going to be creating is we're going to be creating errors. These are critical alarms. So for example, if we have a silo, we might have several level sensors, and you might have heard of high, low, and you might have also heard of high, high, and low, low. High and low are simply just warnings. They are warnings to the operator of where the actual fluid is in that silo at that point in time, whether the silo is high or whether the silo is low. Then you've got high, high positioned above the high sensor and you've got low, low positioned below the low sensor. What happens here is if the silo fluid hits the high, high sensor, that then turns on the critical alarm, which is your error, and that there would then stop the filling of the silo. Or if we turned on the low, low alarm, that would then stop the emptying of the silo. So we're going to create error alarms when we create our alarms here. Now, what we can actually do with these alarm classes is we can actually select how these are to be viewed when they appear on the HMI. So you can see here, I'm just going to reduce the size of this column and then I'm going to just expand this column here and you can see inside of the acknowledgement model that errors are alarms with simple acknowledgement what this means is that the operator must acknowledge the alarm to clear the alarm so he must have been aware and he must have selected yes I'm aware that alarm took place system and warning alarms don't need any acknowledgement so when they turn on inside of the program they'll turn on on the HMI when they turn off they won't need any acknowledgements so they'll be removed from the HMI whilst errors they'll turn on and turn on on the HMI if they turn off they will remain on the HMI until the operator has acknowledged that alarm is taking place and what we can now say here is what is the background color of incoming and what is the background color of incoming and outcoming alarms going to be on errors systems and warnings so what we can say here is when we have an error alarm and it's active we want it to be a red background. 
system alarms, we're going to have it being a white background. And what I might say is with a warning alarm, what I want that to be is a yellow background. So if we have a error, that will be identified by red. System will simply be white and warnings, they will be yellow. Yellow for warning, red for error. And then what it's also asking you to do is what color do you want the background to be when it's being acknowledged? So for this guy here, for the errors, what I might say is, well, when it's red, it's active. And when it's yellow, it's being acknowledged inside of the actual HMI. These two here, we cannot change, however, because these don't need acknowledgement. So I'm going to leave this as it is for now. Now that we've set up the colors inside of this HMI, what we need to do is we now need to set up the runtime setting to allow it to work from the alarm colors. If we don't set this up, what will happen is the alarm will appear just as normal. There won't be any sort of color coding. So to set up the color coding, all we do is we go to runtime settings and then we go to alarms. And then here where it says alarm class colors, select the checkbox. And now what that'll do is when the alarm turns on, it will use the color coding that we just set up inside of the alarm class. And I'm just going to close that down there. I'm just going to save my project so far. Next, I'm going to go back to discrete alarms because that's all we're going to be creating here. They're just going to be on or off alarms. And we're going to create the very first alarm and that there is going to be our high, high alarm. So I'm just going to type in here, high, high alarm. And then I'm going to select the alarm class as the error. You can change it whether you want it to be an error or a warning. There's no system because this is not a system alarm. System relates to the HMI or the PLC. This is going to be an error, so it's a major alarm. And then it's asking you for a trigger tag. And what the trigger tag is looking for is it's looking for an HMI tag or a PLC tag. And as you can see inside of our HMI tags, nothing is available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select add object. And now this is going to allow me to add the alarm to the HMI tag. And you can see here that the name is HMI tag one. I'm going to call it alarms. Now you'll be thinking, well, why aren't we giving it the name high, high alarm or low, low alarm or anything like that? Well, this is because when you create an alarm tag inside of the PLC, it asks you to specify it as either a UINT or a UDINT. And what a UINT is, it's an unsigned integer, so it doesn't use bit 15 as the sign flag, as its negative or positive flag. So that means it uses all 16 bits, and all of those bits inside of that integer, all 16 bits, refer to an individual alarm. So here, I'm going to set up alarms, and I'm going to set it as a UINT, and it's going to effectively create 16 alarms inside of my PLC program. And then what I can do is I can assign the high, high alarm to the first bit. I can then assign the low, low alarm to the second bit. And then I have 16 of these available. So next, I'm just going to select OK. And then here, it's asking you, what is the trigger bit going to be? And you can see here, the very first bit inside a binary is zero. So this is going to be my very first alarm, trigger bit zero. So when bit zero inside of my alarms integer turns on, that there is going to be my very first alarm for my high, high alarm. Next, I'm going to type in low, low alarm. And that there is going to be trigger bit one. So inside of the PLC program, if I wanted to turn on these alarms inside of the PLC, all I would then do is I would then write to this alarms integer and select this bit from that alarms integer to turn it on from. However, we don't have a PLC, so I'm going to do this from the actual HMI from those push buttons. So now that I've created my two alarms and they're all ready to be set up, they've both got an ID and that's the ID number one and two. You can give this whatever you want. All we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our alarm screen and I'm going to select set A1. I'm going to go to its properties. And I'm going to go to its event. And when we press A1, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go to edit bits and I wanted to set a bit in a tag. And this is going to be the tag alarms. So if I select that from my drop down menu, there it is there. There's my alarms. It's a UINT 16 bits and I want it to set bit zero. 
So when I press set A1, what it's gonna do is gonna turn the very first bit, bit zero from my alarms tag to a logic one. When I press reset, what I'm then gonna want it to do is I'm then gonna want it to reset a bit in the tag. I want it to reset my alarms, bit zero. So I press this button to set the alarm. I press this button to reset the alarm. As I mentioned before, this will be done inside of the PLC, but we don't have that privilege just yet. Next, I'm gonna set alarm two. So now if I drop this down here, I go to edit bits, I go to set bit in tag, drop this down, select alarms, and then I'm gonna select bit one. Again, go to your reset and do the same thing, but reset bit in tag. There we go. Click the three dots. There it is there. And I want it to reset bit one. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do, save my project and then test it out. So I'm gonna hit the simulator here. It's then gonna begin the simulation. It should then tell me that it's gonna start off from the alarm screen and there it is there. It's gonna start from the alarm screen. I'm then just gonna say okay to this. And here we go, there's my alarms. They've disappeared there, they all came up originally, that's just the HMI setting up. No alarms are currently active, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set alarm one. I'm gonna set that there, and it's gonna turn that alarm on. Now at the moment, it doesn't look red, and that's because it's currently highlighted on the HMI. If I set alarm two, there it is there. There's your high, high alarm from just before, that is red. If I select that, you can also see the low, low alarm is now red. These alarms are now active on the system. So what happens if I reset alarm one, which is my high, high alarm? Well, if I reset alarm one, it doesn't disappear from the screen. And it doesn't disappear because it needs to be acknowledged. So for it to be acknowledged, what I need to do is select the alarm and then hit the acknowledge key and that then removes it from the HMI. Now I've still got my lower low alarm. All I'm gonna do is reset alarm two and then acknowledge it and then that will then disappear. What happens if we acknowledge it first? Well, set alarm one, set alarm two, acknowledge alarm one first and now that turns to yellow to tell me it's been acknowledged. Acknowledge alarm two. That now tells me it's been acknowledged. They are still on the system though because the alarms are still active. Now when they become reset, that's when they disappear. And that there guys is a brief introduction to setting up alarms inside of your HMI. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please remember to give the video a like. Please remember to comment below and hit the subscribe button. It helps us out a lot and I look forward to seeing you again next time.